A graduate of Clearwater High School, Nathan Young had the opportunity to be mentored by Christy Johnson in the Pro Start program during his junior and senior years. During that time, he gained experience in the classroom and through Pro Start competitions, eventually deciding upon culinary arts as a career. He attended East Central College and currently works as a chef in the St. Louis Country Club. We caught up with Nathan recently as he addressed the CHS student body in a Zoom meeting as part of the Career Cafe Spotlight on Literacy program. This industry is a lot of research and development and, you know, finding out what fits your personality the best. And a lot of people don't even like to compete. You don't even have to compete in this industry, you know. I know a lot of people that I work with that have never competed before and there's still great names around the area. It's all about finding what you believe is right for you. Uh, the biggest thing that I would recommend if you're going into this career is to reach out. Reach out to people that know what they're doing. Um, I know Mrs. Burns there in the high school has my information. So if anybody is very serious about this or they want you know, to figure out how to do this, I'm, I'm always open to anybody shooting me an email, calling me, texting me whatever you guys got to do to figure out, you know, if it's right for you. Um, and then diving back into the competition scene, because that's where I thrive at in a sense. My first competition I did was by myself when I was very first in culinary school. I had no idea what I was doing. I competed and I did a little chicken dish with a little, uh, chicken uh, tortellini. I had no clue what I was doing. I had no clue what I'd got myself into. And after that competition, I got offered a job working at a country club. And I was like, no, thank you. You know, I'm just still in school. I don't want to get a job and have that burden of, you know, stretching myself then. So I waited. I and do. about four months later, I got another job opportunity and I had to do an apprenticeship. I so I went to St. Louis Country Club did my apprenticeship uh -huh. through the culinary school and I got offered to compete on the junior St. Louis team, which is basically students that have the thrive to compete and um, they, you're doing it as a team. So it was me and four other individuals. We traveled to Wisconsin to compete and we ended up taking second place with a silver medal and a lot of us were defeated and a lot of us were like, man, we should have won if we would have done this, if we could have done that. But the people that I met there offered me to do a competition later that in the next year in the spring to represent the St. Louis chapter and go to Indianapolis where I ended up, which is where I did, which is where I did this fish dish and uh, where I ended up you know, learning a lot of different things because this was a mystery basket, going in blind. You have no idea what you're doing, like a chopped aspect of it. And uh, I ended up doing that and the, the chocolate piece there. And I ended up winning that competition, which kind of put some wind under my wings. And I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, I'm, this is easy. And um, then I went on to Pittsburgh which was representing the entire Midwest chapter. And it's like, okay, this is a very stressful. There's 12 other people here that are really serious about this. And um, I ended up winning there, winning the national level, went, uh, being the best young chef in the United States that year. And I was like, okay, this is cool. This is awesome. They're like, oh, by the way, you're going to Canada in September. And this was in June. I was like, okay, I can do this get there there's 24 other countries there and then that's when you know the fear sets in and you're like okay this is serious this is you know they mean business here um went there and the unbelievable amount of people that were there we had probably at least 250 to 300 people there all wanting you know to meet us the best young chefs from every country and uh, you have people saying, you know, if you're ever in uh, Dubai, come out here and look at this. If you're ever in Shanghai, you know, I'm the chef here. Come over here. And you leave with a stack of business cards that you, 
you would have never have ever met if you didn't put yourself in that situation. And I was like, after I was like, I don't even, you know, I don't even care if I win anymore. This dude just told me if I ever come to Shanghai, he's going to put me up and I can stay here for free. And uh, it's all these people, you can call them at any time. And that's the biggest thing about this career is the people that you meet and the people that the amazing people, because this, you're never going to find another industry that's like the culinary field. Because I could call somebody that I haven't talked to in two years, but I met them at this one competition or I met them at this one ACF meeting and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're Nathan uh, from St. Louis. Yeah. What's going on? And it, it's just a family here. And is there, at least from what I've experienced, there's nothing like it. You know, I have a lot of people talking about, oh, well, you know, I wish I would have done this or I you wish I would have done this. I'm happy where I'm at. It's it's not for everybody and it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure, because I'm sure everybody's heard nightmares about kitchens and they've all seen Gordon Ramsay and stuff like that. But it's it's not that bad. A lot of a lot of it's changing now. It used to be bad. Um there's no Gordon Ramsay's yelling in kitchens, at least not in the US because we have a lot of labor laws and a lot of laws that prevent people from doing that. What do you want to do? If you, if you want to do this, then you have, you have to reach out. You have to, you know, don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to start something. You have to be able to say, you know, let's, let's see what this is about. Don't second guess yourself. But if anyone has any questions about anything that I've done or any, you know, any ways to get started or um, anything like that, feel free to ask away. So Nathan, one of the videos that I watched recently about careers said that you need to find a lifestyle that you want to live before mm -hmm. you can decide on a career. And so what what kind of lifestyle do you live? Do you have to work certain hours? Tell us about that a little bit. Um, so I've worked a very large facet of different hours. Right now I work seven, yeah, seven o'clock in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon. So I'm off at 2.30 and I'm home. So that's another thing about this industry is you could, if you're, if you work in the restaurant business or working in country club and stuff like that, there are some hours where it's like, you're there. Like I've worked plenty of 14 to 16 hour shifts um, because we have big things going on and stuff like that. But this industry allows you to pick what you want. You know, if, if the lifestyle of being at work all the time um, isn't for you or, you, you know, for me, it wasn't being at work all the time. It was, you know, this is what I love to do. So I'm going to do it. Um, but if that's not the right choice for you, then you can go in to do something like working in a hospital, which has more regulated hours. They're never going to work you over nine hours. Um, and you can basically pick and choose your shifts that you want to work. You can work four o'clock in the morning till noon, or you can work four o'clock at night till midnight. Um, that's another very interesting thing about this field is there's so many, um, once you get your degree, there's so many different ways you can take it. You can get your uh, bachelor's in business and you know become a front of the house manager, which is just gonna help your resume even more because you know about the food in the back of the house. Uh, and I know a lot of people from the culinary school that I went to that don't live the same lifestyle I live because I have two kids. So I don't like being at work all the time, being gone all the time, you know, cause then I don't ever get to spend time with my family. So, um, that's why I chose to work in the mornings cause I'm home in the afternoon and I get to see my kids. Um, uh, but, you know, but I, other people that I work with, they love working nights. They love coming in at one o'clock in the afternoon and work until 10 o'clock at night, you know, and then they go out with their friends to a bar or something after work. If that's your lifestyle, then so be it. 
I'm not one to judge how other people live. So, you know, if you have to figure out what you want to do and uh, the culinary field can offer, you know, a vast variety of, for different lifestyles. Um, Cause I know people that have worked in the restaurant business for eight to 10 years and then they flip flop and now they're a food rep and, you know, they work Monday through Friday, nine to five and they're off on the weekends because now they have a family and they want to be home on the weekends. So it's, it's a, it's, it's a very interesting field to where it offers you um, different facets to fall into where it's not all, you know, this is what it is and you can't change your mind. So you started out here in pro start with Mrs. Johnson and Correct. someone here would like to enter the food industry and they do that. And then what should be their next step? Um, so I started out with Miss Johnson and I actually, when I was a senior, I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, I was kind of in between things, trying to figure stuff out. And I was like, okay, well, I, you know, I really like this. And I went and competed and a judge there was like, Hey, you know, if you're serious about this, check out this school. Um, so that's the first, I think that's the first step is finding um, the school that you want to go to. And um, like I said, I'd highly recommend checking out East Central College. It's in Union, Missouri. Um, it just offers, the, for, I think that's the closest culinary school um, to the high school. I think it's a little over an hour and a half away but it it's also doesn't put you in the situation of, you know, moving to a big city and that's completely different than living in Piedmont because the town that I lived in was pretty similar to Piedmont and I wasn't ready to go and move to St. Louis just yet. So that's another biggest thing is, you know, you gotta slowly inch your way forward. Don't just take a big leap and fall on your face. You gotta inch your way uh, into the industry and um, find out what the best route is for you. Because I could tell you the way that I went and it might not be right for you. Um, but I would highly recommend um, checking into the schools, you know, doing your research on the schools. Don't just jump into a school blindly saying, I hope this is the right school. And then after you get one semester in, you're like, man, I wish I would have went to this school instead because this isn't the right the right choice for me. Here's, do we have any students that would like to ask Nathan questions? No. My advisory does. Um, one is why does it take so long to perfect a dish? And another one is do you cook like this at home? Ooh, very, very good questions. Um, it takes long, so long to perfect a dish because um, you have to decide every attribute that you want to add to the dish because everything adds something different. You could add, um, for, for instance, a celeriac puree, which is celery root, which is a very bland um, canvas where you can add any, anything to it. Or you could add something stronger to where, you know, you could do a roasted garlic puree that's stronger and it's all plugging and playing different ingredients into a dish to where a finalized dish may be completely different than what you started with. You might've started with chicken and now you're cooking, um, you know, let's see. So I started with chicken and now I might be cooking duck because I think duck fits what I'm doing better. So it's all about plugging and playing with an ingredients and um, knowing what ingredients fit the season the best in a sense too because you know you might be trying to mess with apricots and it's not the time of season so you're getting bitter apricots that somebody's you know tried to store and put a bunch of preservatives in and they don't taste right it's like getting strawberries in the middle middle of december it doesn't make sense because they're bitter and they're white in the center um and then as for do i cook like this at home sometimes i do uh sometimes i don't like yesterday, I think I ate a frozen pizza for dinner. So um, I, I try to cook like this at home sometimes. It's just give and take of um, the right time, right place. And a lot of times a home kitchen doesn't offer enough space 
to do some of the things that I want to do, if that makes sense. Well, Nathan, we sure appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. And Absolutely. I, I would just like to say if like anyone ever wants to reach out and, uh, you know, has any questions, you know, that they don't want, you know, to say in front of everybody because they think, you know, uh, this might not be the right question for this time or whatever. Um, you know, you can reach out to me personally. Um, I'll give my information uh, to Mrs. Burns so that I'll even give her my personal cell phone number. So if anyone has any questions, they can shoot me a text saying, you know, I was thinking about going into the culinary field, but I don't know if, you know, I should take this step in, or this step, or I want to go to East Central to check it out, but I'm too nervous to go by myself. You know, can you talk to Chef Mike, who's the program coordinator over there, you know, and see what the best time is? Uh, because I, I, kept a, I keep a very personal um, connection with the college there. So if anybody ever wants to go check it out or, you know, anything like that, I could definitely set up a meeting there and help you get, like, tour the kitchen, which most of the time don't really let other people do. I can take you back there and do whatever you guys want to do. Check it out to see if it even is the right step for you or if you, you know, decide it's not. We appreciate you being here, and uh, I just really thank you for your time. Oh, I, no worries, absolutely. I think it's fantastic what you've done. I'm just in awe. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.